Okay, grade 11, this is our last lesson for this unit. We will be going, doing an activity together next week, looking at some sample IAs, and you'll be assessing them to make sure you're not making any mistakes on your particular um, mock IA. We're going to start, though, by talking about um, discussion and analysis part, which is the biggest part worth the most points of your entire IA. And if you've not done Collective Idiot yet, or you haven't even started, you really need to get going because this part takes a while to do and it's really important to do well. Um, so data collection planning ends up being not a huge number of the points, it's how you analyze that data and how you describe it that's going to be a part of the points for your IA. So first let's look at the rubric. This is the rubric for the an analysis section. This is 6 out of 24 possible points. It's a quarter of the value of your IA. And if you take a look here, either, let's look at the 5-6 level. So the report has in, includes sufficient relevant quali quantitative and qualitative raw data that could support a detailed and valid conclusion to the research question. So that means you did lots of trials. You have lots of interesting organisms. You have lots of data um, and multiple data types. So if you want to include some images, that will be your qualitative data and quantitative data. It's your raw data unprocessed. So what you made it putting in an appendix, you have to show that you have lots of data to support your conclusion. If you don't have enough data, or it's incomplete, like up here, or insufficient, that's going to bring you down. So remember with these rubrics, if to get a 5-6, you have to get a 5 a f for all four of these points. If you have really good on these three, but you mess up the first one, you're going to get a 2. Okay, so make sure you're aware of that. The same thing you have to do is you have to have your data processing has to be done with accuracy, to give a conclusion that is fully consistent with the external data. So that means you have done your statistical analysis, you've done your graphing, and you're able to accurately do those tests and interpret them and connect to your research question, and it's consistent with the data actually show. So your examiner or your grader can read your data tables, read what you found, and compare that to what you actually are saying you found and what the stats say, and they can see that you did it correctly, that it matches. The report sh uh, shows evidence of full and appropriate consideration of the impact of measurement uncertainty. So how certain are you about every single measurement in your experiment? And if you have some uncertainty, what are they? And how have you accommodated that in your experiment, in your discussion? And then the process data is correctly interpreted so that a completely valid and detailed conclusion to the research question can be deduced. So you're coming back to your research question. It is a valid answer. You have enough data that's both reliable and valid. It's detailed. There should be multiple paragraphs. Okay, and it's correctly interpreted. You understand what the data actually shows you. So here's some, some points to make. So a really good conclusion or discussion is going to begin with a description of the trends but you found the data. So what did you actually find? You're not going to name every data point. You'll name some of the key ones. The idea is you're starting off with, here's what I found. Because you should have so much raw data and process data that it's not very efficient for someone to look through that to draw the conclusions. You have them looking for them, and you say, okay, these are the most important points. And they can double check those looking back at your data, but they need to do that. Okay, so here's some good examples of phrases you could use. The data support the hypothesis that the smaller agar cube is the faster it decolorizes, or the graph clearly shows the cube size is inversely proportional to the distance traveled. So in this experiment here, um, it's a common one done in AP biology where you have cubes of agar that are soaked with an indicator, which is phenophthalene. You put it in alcohol or water, and you see how quickly the color fades. Um, and that's to show how surface area impacts interaction across the membrane. So it's surface area to volume ratio in cells. So some examples where we're summarizing what was found in a clear and concise way. And then you connect that theory back to the background information in the exploration and in your introduction part of it. And talk about the trends shown in the analysis. So connect the trends to the background, the theory to what you actually found. Connect those two together. It's a really important part of your discussion. Okay, the next part of the discussion rubric here is also be part of evaluation. So evaluation is also worth six out of twelve of twenty-four points. So another quarter value of this. So twelve out of twenty-four points is from analysis and evaluation. Really important parts of your IA. 
So again, I'm not going to go through the one, two, three, four level, just the five, six, five and six points. So your detailed conclusion is described and justified, which is entirely relevant to the research question and fully supported by the data presented. That means you have a complete conclusion, but you're going to use actual data points to justify the statement you're saying, the trend you're saying. It answers the research question directly, and it supports and connected to the data you actually found reported in your findings part of your IA write-up. Your conclusion is correctly described and justified through relevant comparison to the accepted scientific context. That's one students often miss and it brings them down all the way down here or even lower depending how badly they miss it up. So you have to find other resources similar to what you did and compare their findings to your findings and cite, cite, cite the sources. Okay? You talk about strengths and weaknesses of the investigation, so limitations of the data and source of error. They're discussed and provide evidence of a clear understanding of the methodological issues involved in establishing the conclusion. Notice how it doesn't talk about human error. We'll talk about that in a minute, but the methodological issues, things you could improve your methodology if you had maybe better equipment, or you had more time, or you had learned more things before you started your IA. And the last one is a student has discussed realistic and relevant suggestions for the improvement and extension of the investigation. So discussed means several senses talking about, I would do this because this and this is how I would do it. Okay, how would you improve it and how would you extend it? So extending means looking into other variables maybe, extending into other species. What are you going to do to learn more about this topic? Okay, so let's talk about the discussion. In the evaluation part of your discussion, we talk about strengths, weaknesses, and improvements. So this should be a short part of your discussion that's going to show that you understand what worked in your investigation and what did not work well in your investigation. Okay, so for example, you could say there's sufficient raw data to allow a calculation of standard deviation, which is at least five trials, which has improved my confidence in the conclusion. That's a great way to say it's the strength of your investigation is the amount of data you collected. Um, you can also talk about errors. So there's unavoidable problems. And talk about the data, the apparatus, the methodology, all types of errors. Do not talk about human error. Say human error causes results to be unreliable. If human error made a mistake, then you redo that step. Okay? So at this level, you can't be like, oh, I'm clumsy and I didn't read the timer properly or I didn't press a stopwatch correctly. That is not appropriate for the IB. Okay, human error is like a lazy way of saying I didn't do it right and I didn't bother to redo it which of course is something that we learn how to fix and improve in middle school but by the time we get to the DP that should no longer be an option so if you have a human error um, think about when you're thinking of that look at okay is this actually a methodological error is this something in the methodology that I should have thought of and a colleague that I couldn't um, a lot of times people say things like human error with a stopwatch okay well if that's your only option and there's nothing else you could do. That's not a human, it's a methodological error. You don't have equipment to get the time more precisely. Okay, so be careful with the difference here. An error is something that affects your results, but is not plausible to avoid. You can't avoid it um, or account for it for some reason. For some reason. While it's a mistake, is effective, but you could have avoided it reasonably. And a lot of those human error things are things you can avoid. So we don't use the term human error. It's actually like just saying, I made a mistake. Okay, and then we have systematic errors and random errors, things like um, if you have an extra that's incorrectly calibrated. Let's say if you have a pH probe that's not working properly, but it'll be the same pH probe the whole time, meaning it's accurate between trials. Even though the value isn't true, the difference between the different values should still be true. Okay, and then there'll be random errors, um, careless mistakes, using the wrong technique, those kinds of things are other kinds of error. Okay, and you have to talk about uncertainty. So if you're, if you're taking chem, I know you talked about this quite a bit already, um, but we're going to talk about uncertainty now if you haven't already done this, and how we do it for biology. So uncertainty is not error, okay? If you are uncertain, you've made a correct measurement, but maybe it's not as precise as it could possibly be. And the precision of measurement is often limited by the tool you're actually using, and the tool can be limited by what's available to you um, in the lab or at home. So for example, here's a ruler, here's a block of wood. How long is that block of wood? Well, hopefully you got 4.5 centimeters, but how sure are you that it's not like 4.53 centimeters? 
or 4.49 centimeters. How sure are we that it's exactly 4.5? Well, we're not that certain. And the uncertainty for this particular ruler is 0 0.25 centimeters. And the reason why it's, we say that is because uncertainty of any tool is equal to half the value of the smallest division. So for this ruler, each division is 0.5, right? 0.5 is the smallest division here, so half that value is 0.25. That's my uncertainty for that particular tool. Now if I look here, I have root rulers again, I have two different rulers, the same pencil. Which ruler we have a better choice to use to reduce my uncertainty? Well, hopefully you notice here, this one's 4.9 with, with a uncertainty of plus minus 0 0.1, and this one's 4.8 plus minus 0 0.3. This is much more precise. So because it has more gradations, it has more lines on it to show it in different increments. So when you're designing your experiment, you need to pick the most precise tools at your disposal. And if you choose this ruler instead of this ruler, then that is methodological error. That is poor planning on your part. And you should go back and redo the measurements with a better tool. Okay, so you always have to report the uncertainties for any measurement you're making, any tools you're using during any investigation. We do that from now on for the entire course. You also have to design an experiment with the least amount of uncertainty possible. So if you're doing this, a common example of this and a big source of error and a lot of experience source of uncertainty, um, is measuring volumes of liquids. So we have three different containers here. We have a beaker, a graduated cylinder, and a burette. Which one should you use to measure a volume of a liquid? What you'll notice the uncertainty is very different each one. It's plus one, it's one milliliter, which is very imprecise. Beakers are horrible for measuring volume. You have 0 0.01, sorry, 0 0.1 for a grad cylinder, and 0 0.001 for a burette. So depending on how important these values are, you should be using a burette. Maybe you grab something that's not that important in your experiment, but you should never use a beaker to measure volume of a liquid. When you're measuring, you also have to make sure you use your measuring properly. Notice the line here kind of dip in the liquid. That's called the meniscus. And that is what we use to measure is the bottom of the meniscus. That's what we use to make the reading of the volume. So make sure you use that. Okay, a lot of equipment already has the uncertainty for you. A lot of glassware has it written on the side of it, so you don't have to calculate the smallest increment divided by two. Um, a lot of vernier probes will actually have that um, in the manual for the device, you can find it. And if you're not sure, you can always do some research and find other sources that tell you the uncertainty of a scale you're using, of a tool you're using that you're not sure about. Um, make sure you cite the source, though, of anything you use to help you with that kind of thing. Here's some examples of how students have reported uncertainties in their IA. Um, you don't have to do it a certain way, but you have to discuss it in your discussion, as it says in the rubric. So here's a student who, in their data tables, said the uncertainty. So here is their uncertainty of parts per million in their, um, their data. And here's the, for the mass and the scale of the uncertainty, the scale they use, they're putting that in the data table. Here's a student who did it in their materials list. They put um, their mass, the uncertainty, the beakers, the uncertainty, percentage uncertainty. We have beaker, grad cylinder. That should not be the same as that. That's a mistake. But, and here we have the pet should also have uncertainty figured out for it. So all those things there. Okay. Now, in your discussion, if you're talking about weaknesses in your discussion, be specific and give details. Please do not say collect more data. Oftentimes, more data or not having enough data is a clear weakness of an experiment. But the way to talk about that at the appropriate level for the DP is something more like this. There was insufficient data. It would be better to collect 10 repeats of each experiment so the average would be more precise and a some deviation could be calculated to help decide whether there was a difference between species A and species B. Because you have more information about what, the, why you need more data, how much data you need, and how it would make a difference in your experiment. So every weakness, do that. Talk about what the weakness was. Talk about why it's a weakness, how you would fix it, and how that would help. 
Okay, the last thing we'll talk about is communication. Now, this grade is for the entire IA, not just the discussion, but a big part of it comes to discussion because the most of your writing is the discussion part. So it's worth four at 24 points, so one-sixth of your IA score is for communication. If we look here at the rubric, the presentation is clear. Any errors you do not hamper understanding of the focus, process, and outcomes. So you're allowed to have some small mistakes, spelling, that kind of stuff, but they can't make a mistake with any process and outcomes. It has to be well-structured and clear. The information, the focus, process, and outcomes is present and presented in a coherent way. So step by step in the correct sequence for a lab report, which we've already looked at already this year. Um, it has subtitles. It's well organized. It is relevant and concise. So you're not being really wordy. Some of you guys who are more um, history minded or that kind of social studies minded tend to be really wordy. It's concise. Science though being concise. You don't talk about irrelevant things. Everything is relevant. Everything is concise. It gives you a really clear understanding of focus process and outcomes. You use the correct terminology. Use the right names for equipment, use the right names for your species, all that kind of stuff. Um, and use appropriate and correct conventions. So things like units, graphing formatting, single test formatting, all that kind of stuff. So there are any errors you do have, do not hamper understanding. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful for you to further improve you guys to call your discussions the biggest part that's worth half the points of your IA we're going to do some practicing of two things different ways to analyze your data that includes both for your results and also for your discussion and how to write strengths and extensions in your discussion write good ones um, so I'm going to show you this looks like this is a worksheet I'm posting on Schoology so activity four you have a table here this is a method to analyze data and then what the purpose is and when you might use it some of these are completed for you, and some of these are not. When you have this finished, it'll be a really great reference tool for you. So I want you to go through, and you can do this with somebody else, work with a partner, that's totally fine. So fill that in here for this. What are they useful? And then help. Here's Dara's experiment. Oh, I don't have that. I'll have to post Dara's experiment for you guys as well to talk about. Um, so which of their experiment on yeast should they do? So I will post that. And then here we have um, the part of your evaluation section, your discussion. A lot of students forget to talk about limitations and improvements. So here are some examples here of their strength and their strengths. I will also upload the information about this experiment that we're talking about, Dara's experiment you're going to be improving. But do these practice sheets. It's really important. They're mandatory. You have to do them. You have to practice. Okay. Um, Remember, the whole point of this unit and this mock IA is to help you guys really submit your scientific investigation skills, prepare really well for the real IA, or 20% of your IB grade for next year. So your homework, complete the practice sheet, upload it, upload a copy of your notes for today's lesson. And this is our very last lesson in the unit. Next class, sorry, next, yeah, I'll be posting for you um, next week uh, some practice reviewing some sample IAs with the rubric, but there's no new material. Okay, we're all done. Your IA is due on May 27th. That's coming pretty quick, so make sure you get your data collected so you have lots of time to do a really excellent discussion and get all 12 of those points. Okay, guys, take care and have a good day.